streaming services, cloud file storage, ad blocking, and antivirus software. They're all going up in price, but not so much in quality. It's starting to seem like the days of owning your own software product are gone, and leasing access to software for a monthly fee is becoming the new norm. But not you, not you. You went and got yourself a single board computer, and with that comes pretty much endless possibilities. I'm just here to get you started. Let's go. An SBC or single board computer is a compact standalone computer built on a single circuit board like this Raspberry Pi. They're small, versatile and affordable little units that have a thriving community behind them. If you're a fan of breaking things, fixing things, learning things, efficiency, saving money, any of that, then you're in the right place. All right, so whether it's for stability, protection, or style, you're gonna need some kind of case to put this bad boy in, right? While there are tons of different case options for your single board computer, I'm just gonna break them down into two categories, an enclosed case and an open air case. If you've never heard the term open air case before, don't be alarmed, it's just a case that's partially exposed to the elements. So having an open air case just gives you easier access to things like this, like the pins and, and those kind of things. And an old fashioned closed case will look something like this, maybe, right? This case was actually sent to me by a viewer that owns an Etsy shop. I'll put a link for it in the description, but it's a case for the Orange Pi 5, which is a very new single board computer. There was no support for it when it came out, and it's only been out for a few months now, and we already have beautiful 3D printed things like this. And that's why I like this community so much, because everybody has a can-do attitude, you know what I mean? If something doesn't work or something isn't compatible, somebody out there has got a 3D printer and some skill and some time and some passion, and they're gonna make something like this, and, and I appreciate stuff like this. All right, so let's move on to software so I can introduce you to my boy Tux. He is the mascot of my favorite operating system, Linux. And you're gonna be seeing a lot of him. So Linux is gonna be the main operating system you're gonna be interacting with. Operating system, I use as a loose term. The correct term would be kernel. It is kind of the foundation the operating systems are built on top of. But for the sake of this, we'll just refer to Linux as an operating system and kind of make that interchangeable, just so it's a little bit easier to understand. The first Linux-based operating system I wanna talk about is gonna be a familiar one. It's called Android. Some single board computers that support Android can be used for tasks like building digital signage, kiosks, and other applications with touch interfaces that could be useful. The next Linux-based operating system I wanna talk about is called Ubuntu, or Ubuntu. Ask anybody and they'll pronounce it differently, but Ubuntu is one of the most popular Linux-based operating systems out there. But the cool thing about Ubuntu is those developers also make builds specifically for single board computers like the Raspberry Pi and Orange Pi. Armbian is another operating system that I recently tried out with the Orange Pi 5 for the first time. And I know these names sound goofy like Armbian. Armbian is just a combination of two words, ARM being an acronym for the type of processor that you'll see on your single board computer. So BN is just a derivative of this other operating system called Debian. Armbian being the ARM version of Debian. Make sense? And last but not least on our operating systems is the Raspberry Pi OS. Raspberry Pi OS is great. Um, it does run on the Raspberry Pi, obviously. It is dedicated for the Raspberry Pi. It used to be called Raspbian because it was based off Armbian as well. I can't suggest the Raspberry Pi 4 enough. They're, they're low on stock. I know some people are gonna be in the comments. You can't get one. But if you can get your hands on a Raspberry Pi 4, I highly suggest it just for using Raspberry Pi OS. Now, depending on what operating system you chose, you're gonna need to install some software, right? I'm not gonna take too long on this part. Just gonna rattle off some software and what they do. If you're looking to build software with your single board computer, I suggest Genie and Python. Genie is going to be your IDE that you write code in and Python is going to be running in the background. GIMP is a free alternative to Photoshop and runs great on single board computers. Pi-hole is an application that runs in the background of your single board computer that can actually block ads on the network level, not just on the local or browser level. Chromium and Firefox are going to be two great web browsers to start out with. And the most important application you're going to be using is the terminal application. You're going to be in terminal a lot with Linux based operating systems if you want to actually do more advanced things with them other than clicking icons on your desktop. So a good terminal application is going to get you very far. And next up is storage, right? With all computers, we're gonna need storage and that's gonna vary based off of the user's needs, right? But let's start with the general aspect of it. Every single board computer is gonna have an SD card slot. That's gonna be its primary operating system slot. Um, you're gonna image your SD card on another computer, um, get it ready and bootable and then you're going to insert it in your single board computer and that's going to be how it boots up. It's It just boots up from the SD card uh, for the most part by default. If you have a big SD card, you're gonna be able to store your operating system and other files as well. If you have a small 
SD card that may can only fit the operating system on, you're going to need additional storage. And that can be in the form of a flash drive, an external hard drive, an internal hard drive connected to an adapter that's connected via USB. Basically, any USB interface on the uh, single board computer is going to be used for storage. It can be used for storage. But back to the SD card part, you are going to want a good SD card from a reputable brand. You don't have to go super big with it, like I said, but you do want something that's going to be reliable. The first thing you want to do is make sure your SD card's in the right format. FAT32 or FAT32 is going to be the most common format and the one you usually want to go with um, before putting an operating system on it. Now, like I said, size isn't that important, but you want to make sure you've got at least 16 gigs maybe to house the OS and maybe some additional storage. And a side note, M.2 drives are also becoming a little bit more popular in the single board computer community because manufacturers are building slots on the single board computers now for M.2 drives. So keep that in mind also. Now next up is soldering. I'm a little bit of a hypocrite for me recommending soldering because I am not very good at it myself. I have a soldering iron and I'm just now starting to learn how to solder. I consider myself a solderer, if that's what they call themselves. I got my kit, I got my, my solder, I've got my helping hands, I've got some extra wire, I've got my flux, I've got my full kit, you know, I'm a solderer now. Uh, but the reason soldering is important in the single board computer community, the smaller single board computers with these little holes here, you're going to have to actually do some soldering to get the electrical components to connect in and behave properly. So some of the accessories that you can solder onto your single board computer are things like LEDs, sensors for temperature, CO2, moisture, um, buttons, switches, anything under the sun. The possibilities are pretty much endless. And in 2023, I think it's just a valuable skill to have, you know? Everything has a motherboard in it these days. Having a soldering kit and learning how to solder can probably save you a lot of time and money in the future. So at this point, you've got your single board computer, you got your case, you got your operating system, you got your software, you got your soldering kit, and now it's just... It's time to do some projects, right? So if you're completely new to single board computers, some projects I would start out with would be the ad blocker I mentioned earlier. So installing Pi Hole and seeing how that works, but also my favorite, which is turning your single board computer into a retro game console. That That's a whole division of the single board computer community that solely base all of their projects around running retro games and keeping that community alive. So if you've got the basics down and wanna try something a little bit more advanced, I would try for one, turning your single board computer into a NAS, which is network attached storage. That's going to be basically a huge hard drive that lives on your network that can be accessed from anywhere in your network. Um, and that Raspberry Pi or whatever single board computer you choose to go with can run that software and store all of your files in one location. Um, that's a really good project for learning um, a lot of things, all aspects of it. So you're probably gonna have a nice case for it. You're gonna learn how to install additional drives. You're gonna learn RAID configurations. You're gonna learn um, networking. You're gonna learn a whole lot of stuff when doing that NAS project. And another kind of advanced project I would say would just be building a web server. But a lot of aspects of tech go into making a web server and running a website on uh, hardware that you can actually see. Building a web server on your own network, being able to access it from another machine will teach you a lot. I mean, once you get to that point, you're pretty much on your way. If you can if you can build a NAS and build a web server and manage those and understand how everything works there, I've got nothing else to teach you. You can just watch tutorials and, and kind of kind of just go on your own your own adventure after that. But since we're on the topic of projects, I'm gonna link a video here that's gonna show you how to turn a Raspberry Pi 4 into your own streaming service like Netflix in your own house. And to help you out in the description, I'm gonna put a couple of affiliate links. They're gonna link you to different kits that I suggest based on what path you wanna follow on your single board computer journey. Peace.